So today I'm going to give a talk about the SARS-CoV-3. So my name is Xiao Hong Tan. You can call me XT. I came from uh, Bowling Green, Ohio. So before we touch the talking about the SARS-CoV-3, let's just briefly introduce or just briefly touch the World Wars. Everyone knows World War One, World War Two, and uh, when we will have the World War Three, no one wanted it. And as a bi biochemist, my lab probably can do nothing for the World War Three, but my lab can do some work for the SARS-CoV-3. So in the past 20 years, we already have three outbreaks of the beta coronavirus, SARS-CoV-1, MERS-CoV, and SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 is still here. So imagine in the past 20 years, we already have three. So this is highly possible for the next uh, beta coronavirus, for example, SARS-CoV-3. It might come in the next decade. So we still remember how bad it was when SARS-CoV-2 came here. It killed so many people, right? We get isolated. So it is extremely important if we can have some tools to, to fight for the SARS-CoV-3 in advance, then we can save a lot of lives. So that's the purpose for my talk today. How can we design a tool for the SARS-CoV-3 in advance. So what could be SARS-CoV-3? If we look at the coronavirus family tree, I put the future putative SARS-CoV-3 just after the SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2. So I have to highlight for the past, the COVID-1, COVID-2, and the mers -CoV, all of them belong to the beta coronavirus. This is a spike protein for the beta coronavirus. So here is a delta and Omicron for the SARS-CoV-2. It contains two domains, S1 domain, S2 domain. So you can see S1 domain contains a lot of the mutations indicated by these uh, color dots. If you look at S2 domain, it's highly conserved. So if you compare the S2 domain, of the past three beta coronavirus, you can see among three of them, the S2 domain, amino acid sequence highly conserved and the structure no change. Therefore, I hypothesis, if we have the SARS-CoV-3, it is highly possible, okay, we will have a SARS-CoV-3. The S2 domain still no change. So that means we can target on this highly conserved S2 domain to find the uh, chemical ligand to fight for the future SARS-CoV-3. So many labs or, or, or industry, academia labs, we design the tools to bind into a spike protein, uh, for example, antibodies. And neither one can bind into a spike protein, prevent it from binding the human receptor. In my lab, we design uh, DNA-based aptamers to bind into a spike protein. So what is aptamers? Aptamers is single-stranded oligonucleotides. It's a single-stranded DNA or RNA. RNA is single-strand. They can form to the complex 3D structures and enable them to recognize different targets. So compared with the antibodies, aptamers have many advantages. And one significant advantage is a DNA aptamer is very low cost. So compared with antibody, it could be 2,000 times cheaper. So if we can have such low cost tools combined to the spike protein, we can have a very useful tool. So as I said before, we want to target in a highly conserved S2 domain to find into the DNA aptamers. So let me briefly touch this S1 domain. Spike protein has S1 and S2 domain, two domains. We're targeting highly conserved S2 domain and S1 domain containing a very famous receptor binding domain called RBD. This part is the spike protein, is how the virus using the spike protein to recognize the human receptors. Of course, this is the most popular target, but you cannot use this one as a universe target because among, even among SARS-CoV-2, Delta, Omicron, S1 domain is highly mutated, okay? 
So we target in a highly conserved S2 domain. So we use a optimal selection approach and we finally obtain a single strand DNA. So this is the structure and the sequence. We measure the binding affinity determined to be a low nanomolar range. So this is a very good binding affinity. So how about the binding specificity? So we use a colometric RC. So in this RC, you can see if you add the target protein, the color will change to the purple. If without the target protein, for example, non-specific proteins, the color is still red. So if we add the S2 protein, this is our selection target. Of course, change the color. If you add the whole spike protein, it continues S1 domain, S2 domain of the SARS-CoV-2, it changes color. If you add the SARS-CoV-1 spike protein, it also changes color. It was not a surprise to us because as I said before, S2 domain is conserved. So for the SARS-CoV-1, SARS-CoV-2, they have a very similar S2 domain. So my aptimer can recognize all of them. If you test all the non-specific background proteins, you can see the color still red, especially for the S1 domain, for the SARS-CoV-2. So this data clearly shows us we have a higher uh, uh, affinity binders which can specifically recognize the S2 domain of different beta coronavirus. So next, we check the inhibition RC. This is ELISA RC. So briefly speaking, if you code the human receptor here, if you add a spike protein in the substrate, you will see the color. If you add inhibitors, prevent the spike protein binding to the human receptor, you can see weak or no uh, color. Uh, colorful intensity. So if we assume that the no aptimers as the 100%, we test the negative random aptimer sequence. You can see there's no inhibition. So we test the positive control. This is uh, uh, reporting the DNA aptimer. They know this one can bind into the S1 domain, and we target it to the uh, Y type SARS CoV 2 here, and it can block more than close to 70%. So how about our aptimers? looks very similar. It also can block the spike protein to recognize the human ACE receptor. This actually was a surprising data to us because I said before, my aptimer binding to S2 domain, and it is well known the spike protein used S1 domain to bind into the human cells. So why you bind into S2 domain can affect the S1 domain binding to the human cells. So here is a hypothesis. Based on the structured data, we know that if the spike protein needed to bind into the ACE2 receptor, one S receptor binding domain needed to open. So our hypothesis is that once S2 binding here, S2 domain, the after binding to S2 to two domain, it might have a losterity effect to prevent this S1 domain to open. So that's hypothesis. But unfortunately, we work very hard with our collaborators try to use the crime EM solver structure, but the nucleic acid the protein complex structure is very difficult to be resolved. One partial reason is because aptimer is a single strand nucleotide, they are highly flexible. So we don't have the structured data so far, but this is our hypothesis. So the conclusion is that we report the first anti S2 aptimer. So it has a receptor binding to an independent approach to inhibit the virus using a spike protein recognized in human cells. And because S2 domain is highly conserved, so we believe now we have a tool in advance to fight for the SARS-CoV-3. So maybe in the next decades when the SARS-CoV-3 come here, we have this aptimer, which can be designed as a bioanalytic tool or use a therapeutic tool to fight for the future purity of SARS-CoV-3. So by the way, I have to mention that we reported the first anti-S2 abdomen and afterwards people reported the anti-S2 antibody. They observed that using the anti-S2 antibody, it can also block the virus to infect human cells. But I have to see our abdomens is 2,000 times cheaper than antibodies. So take this opportunity, I'd like to thank uh, the NSF and the BGSU to provide me the support. And uh, thanks to the tank group, and especially Dr. Archie Siva, uh, 
he finished most of his work and right now Archu right now is in the University of Columbia to perform his second postdoc. And thanks to my collaborators, uh Sorab and Bean for the virus support and for the structures analysis. And thank you so much too.